In this video, we're going to be looking at a heating and cooling curve. On our x-axis, we have time measured in minutes. What we're going to be doing is adding heat. So what you'll want to picture is maybe like having a substance on top of your stove, and you'll be adding heat to this substance as time goes by. And what we want to measure is the temperature in degrees C. So as you heat up this substance over the stove, what you would see is the temperature would um, respond something like this. You can see that we have slopes, and we also have plateaus. Slopes are the angled parts, and plateaus are the flat parts. Now, with this particular substance, we have something going on at 0 degrees, and something going on at 100 degrees. Now, you probably guessed that the substance we're heating on the stove here is water. Because water, at 0 degrees, is freezing or melting. And at 100 degrees, that's the boiling point or the condensing point. So you know that if you're below 100 degrees, the water would exist as a solid or as ice. Between 0 degrees and 100 degrees, water would be a liquid. And of course, above 100 degrees, water would be a gas. Now, when this is on the stove, if we're going from a solid to a liquid, um, we're going to have to add energy in order to melt that ice. What happens when we add energy um, is it melts. That's called fusion. Like, as an electrical fuse melts, that's where they get the name fusion. Notice that during fusion or melting, that the temperature is not changing. In fact, all of the energy that's, that's being added to the ice to melt it, um, that's going into the molecules, but it's not, it's not raising the temperature. This temperature is staying at 0 degrees C. Similarly, uh, when we go from a liquid to a gas, um, that process is called vaporization, and that takes place at 100 degrees C. Notice again that the temperature is not changing. In fact, all of the, the heat or energy that we add um, is going towards separating the molecules. Um, it's not going towards raising their temperature. Um, so th all of this so far has been adding heat. But of course, you know it's possible to go from a gas to a liquid to a solid. In that case, um, we're going to be removing heat, or what's going to be happening is, is that the water will be releasing heat to the environment. So as we go from a gas to a liquid, uh, that's condensation. Think about it in terms of on a cold winter day after you're finished with your shower. You don't pull back the curtain and jump out. Usually you just pull back the curtain a little bit, you grab the towel, and you stay inside the shower. That's because inside the shower, there's water vapor. And as that water vapor condenses on your skin and turns into a liquid, it releases heat into your body. So going from right to left, the water will be releasing heat. You also know if you go from a liquid to a solid, that freezing will take place. And in order for water to freeze, it has to give up heat. So don't forget, as we go right to left, we're giving off heat. And as we go left to right, heat is being absorbed. And this is a heating and cooling curve for water. Now before we look at the equations, remember this is a slope, that's a slope, and that's a slope. There's two plateaus, here and here. Anytime the temperature of our substance lands us on a slope, we'll use a particular equation. And anytime we land on one of these two plateaus, we'll also use a particular equation. Here they are. So if the temperature of a substance lands on a slope, we'll use the equation Q equals mc delta t. If it lands us on a plateau, we're going to use the equation Q equals mhf, or Q equals mhv. We'll use this equation when we're on the fusion plateau, whether it be freezing or melting. H sub f is the heat of fusion. We'll use this equation when we're on the vaporization or condensing plateau. H sub v is the heat of vaporization. So Q, that's heat energy. And you know energy is measured in joules or calories. You'll have to know this conversion. 
there's 4.184 joules in every one calorie. Mass, of course, is um, abbreviated with the symbol N, M, and that's measured in grams. C, we've already learned about specific heat capacity. Its units are joules per gram degrees C. And delta T, that's the change in temperature. Now, students often have a hard time calculating the change in temperature. I would recommend that you do not simply do this calculation in your head or quickly on your calculator. I would recommend that you actually write out the temperature final minus the temperature initial. Anytime you calculate the change in temperature, it's always temperature final minus temperature initial. Don't do it any other way. When students try to do this quickly, um, they frequently make mistakes, so don't get caught up on that. Take the time to actually write it out. Temperature final minus temperature initial. That will ensure that you get the proper sign on your answer, either positive or negative. And temperature, of course, is measured in degrees C. So once again, if you're on a slope, use this equation, Q equals MC delta T. If you're on a plateau, you'll have to use one of the two of these. Use this one if you're on the fusion plateau, and use this one if you're on the vaporization plateau.